we're kind of limited in our human language and we're standing there and we're, we see someone in pain and, and suffering and, and we're, we're you know, praying to God to take away that pain and suffering. And we don't, you know, sometimes, you know, in our mind it's like, okay, God, you know, he's a Christian, go ahead and take him home. But then at the same time, oh God, I don't, I don't want him to go home yet. I want him to stay here with me. And, and so there's this, this, this struggle, but the, the Holy Spirit knows how to translate what I'm, um, I'm saying and I'm feeling to my, to my Father, to wow. Father God, you know. And then I was also, you know, I was just thinking of we've never really been taught how to tap into that spirit. You know, we said, okay, we're baptized and we receive the Holy Spirit. So how do we use that to the best of our ability and to glorify God? You know, I mean, there's been times in my life I have known I have actually heard the Spirit talk to me, mm -hmm. guide me, and say, you know, I mean, there's a moment I just like, I mean, ver verbally say, God, what am I going to do now? And just stay still. And I have been directed in my steps of what to do to help this per person mm -hmm. or what mm -hmm. to do to, 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 to do this. But a lot of times I'm so, I'm so busy trying to figure out, you know, there's some other little things, you know, it's like, okay, you know, I've been taught this way, I've been taught I need to do this, so you just kind of start your own maneuvering. The, you know, the loudest times I've heard the Spirit is when I've been just kind of confounded and I've had to stay still. Right, and, right. And, and wait okay. on, the, on, on the answer. So our distractions and stuff that, you know, was just, mm -hmm. that keeps us, the noise, in, in the background of our lives sometimes, keeps us from hearing that Holy Spirit. Right, right. And, and you know what, Sister Sharon, when you was talking about that, when you were talking about the ghost part of it, you know, we got this thing where we say it's our conscience. It won't, we don't even want to give the Holy Spirit credit. It's like, you're about to go into somewhere, traffic-wise, and all of a sudden the hairs on your neck stands up, and you're like, whoa, what was that? And it's, it is, it's automatic, it's detouring you to tell you that you don't supposed to be going that way. Or you get around certain people, like you were saying something about being plugged in. That's our problem. We're not even plugged in. We the cord is right there. We won't even plug in to God. Almost like major. We won't even stay plugged in to get the power that we that we receive. I just was talking about when we first started the man. Our our us our opponent who we was fighting is we have the power. We had it automatically when we first started the match. We was already the. I mean, it was already won for us when the match before we even started. When I was talking about it at the beginning. And let me go back to what I was saying about the uh, being plugged in and things of that nature. You know, and, our, and that hair be standing up. I was at, um, yesterday, I celebrated my 45th birthday, and I was with my nephew, and we went out to some stores out in Dallas. I was just with him. He was asking, do you want to? I'm like, no. And while I was there, in transition, being out there in Dallas, this is a store I've never been to before, uh, in the South uh, Oak Cliff, or whatever it was, my spirit was like, Okay, I'm in a shopping area, but it still alerted me to say, be observant of your surroundings. Because everybody that I was coming in contact, they either had like teardrops and gang symbols, they had all of this. And before I know it, I put on my armor. I'm going to be honest with you all. I don't know about you all doing it. You know, the Bible talks about it says, as it is uh, in heaven, as it, as it is in, on the earth. So me, I automatically take this transition where I am putting my gear on in the spiritual I'll put my helmet on and put my gear on like I'm a soldier that's in this field. I don't know where I'm at. And I'm around all these other spirits. And you can feel it. I mean, I'm hearing the music that's on the intercom. It is all this rapping and cursing that's going on. I'm like, Lord, why am I? But I'm, but I'm, but I'm saying to myself that uh, it's always a reason why God places you at places where you're supposed to be, where you don't think you're supposed to be. But for some reason, that Holy Spirit was like covering me. And I was walking through there like this, y'all was looking around, but I was like, I was very uncomfortable, you know, because of the whole surrounding of it. And then I'm, I'm starting looking at the apparels, the clothing, and then I started looking at the kids that was around it. So I'm saying, this thing has came down, Satan not only has trickled down through our, uh, our apparel 
And when we're supposed to be modest and look like Christian and be in the community of people, it's even on our COVID. I mean, it was like images, and I was like, what? And then I'm being, then I, be, I was thrown off. There were some little kids, and their parents was there, and they was in the go pop in teeth. I was like, whoa. And I was just thrown by all of it, but I can feel that I was supposed to be there, but I needed to be there. Because the fact is, we don't supposed to have fear wherever we go. But the Holy Spirit will tell us that we need to get, get out of that place. We need, to, we need to move. It will tell us that. I'm not saying don't test the Spirit and think that you're a macho man and you're going to go places whereas, you know, you're going to test them. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that when the Holy Spirit tells you to move, you need to move. That ain't your conscience. That's the Holy Spirit telling you, Ralph, you need to move. Because you don't know what is around that corner, what is about to happen. Because we're wrestling against principalities of things we don't even see. And if we could see it, it'll probably scare the mess out of us. Seriously. It'll probably, I was watching, a, oh, it's an old movie with Ken, uh, Ken, Keanu Reeves was playing in it. Constantine. And I was saying to myself, if we could see the things that he could see, it probably would just take us there. But the thing about it, I, I'm feeling it right now, the spirit is on me. Um, one thing about it, we shouldn't fear, I'm not saying fear men and fear women and things of that like that, but I'm just telling you, be be conscious of the Holy Spirit when it tells you that you need to grab, don't go this way, don't go that way, don't do this, don't do that. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling you. It's not a conscious thing. It is the Holy Spirit that's telling you and is leading you. That's why I put off in there as a water break. It's like every time that we feel like that we got this match beat and we go over here just almost like how you see that box. He sits down, and he's tired. He's ready to give up. Like I was first talking about, uh, young men, we become exhausted, but God gives us that strength to fly as eagles. And we almost, oh, something about that water, that Holy Spirit that gives us a little bit more endurance to say, well, let's go back out here. You may get bop, 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 but still, like I was telling you, all sometimes it only takes one lick, just one of them. Sometimes we don't even do that. Sometimes, like I was just saying, we stand there, we take them on, we get hit, we get hit, we get hit. And we take off the armor and things of that nature, and we just forget about, you know, we, we forget about our whole process in this match. Who and what we're fighting, victory is ours, God is the referee, he sees it all. There's a scorecard that's involved, your good and your bad deeds. I want to have my good deeds way up here in my bad down here, so my scale is automatically tipping. I don't want to be no half and half. I want to be like, you know, hands down. Right, in your mansion, through your rolling ground. And I want everybody else to do it. You know, I want everybody, I want to see all of you there. I want to see everybody. That's why it's so important as us being Christian, we have to remove that idea of fear. When we got the Holy Spirit that's with us, we got Christ and God, that's a win. I keep stressing that every week. That is a win-win situation. But we still got to do our part. We still have to. Because one thing I can I can rest assure you, just, just because you've been baptized, it doesn't mean that your fight stops. Matter of fact, you're actually starting again and again. So if, he, if, if Satan already had you before you got baptized, think about how much harder now it's going to be while you're being a Christian. My nephew said, Ralph, you know, you're a bigger target because of what you do. We're all targets. Ain't no small or no big target. That's just like sin. Ain't no small or little I or S and sin. Yeah, I don't care how you spell it, it's still sin. So we are all targets because of the fact is we're trying to do right by God. We're trying to help others. He um, already has everybody else. So why work on that? That's right. You've got to work on that. That's right, sister. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Any comments or questions? Any other? You want to go ahead and keep on elaborating on that, sister? <laughs> yeah, no, I, no, I think that kind of says it all. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it does. There's other scriptures you guys can take a look at. Uh, you get a chance to go over in the Romans. It's talked about when I do good, evil is present over in Romans 7. So it's like every time that you're trying to do good, I mean, I can rest assure you, every bout around that I do with you guys every week, I can rest And I'm not speaking it, but I'm just giving you guys the, the, the information behind it. I go through some every time that I do around. Even before I prepare, prepare, prepare myself, or even before it even happened, I'm already going through it. And if I went through it five years ago, don't think that I haven't. I'm still, I'm still exempt from it. I still go through it. We all still going through it. It might be in a different shape, form, or fashion. You may be a little bit stronger. I may be a little bit weaker. I may be a little bit stronger. You may be a little bit weaker. 
But let's use, let's use all the tools that God has given us and all the information that he's given us for us to become stronger, for us to stay plugged in, get enough energy, because somebody else is coming through there. We got kids that are coming right behind us in these valleys. I mean, if you look at, if you look at it today, uh, if you look at it today, there's so much going on with our kids. There was an accident with the ferry. There was another bus accident. I think FedEx truck hit and hit the school bus. Uh, these kids going into schools, they found another kid with all this ammo. So that's, our children are being attacked, honestly. So if we are not standing there holding the line for them and to teach them the things that we need to teach them, they're going to get torn up. So if that generation is coming behind us and the generation of our other grandkids and other kids come out, somebody got to take a stand. Somebody got to hold the line. So, you know, I pray that every last one of you put your armor on. Keep your armor on. People that you come in contact with, you know, bring them and tell them about God and bring them to, you know, to worship and fellowship with you. Because it says when two is in his name, he is present. And when them hair stick up on the back of your head, don't think that it's just the wind. It's the Holy Spirit telling you, hey, something that you need to, something that you need to be adhered to. Any other questions or comments before we close? All right, guys, it's been a good class this morning. I hope that it has. Next week, we are on focus and vision. We're narrowing this thing down. Round nine, focus and vision. We're going to talk about that. And then we got the trash talk. Whoa. Round 10, round 11. Are you too weak to finish? And round 12, knockout shut up time. So we got about a few more rounds that we're going through on this particular information. So, but after this, don't think that one moment it's over with. As long as we're here on earth, we still got a job to do. Let us pray. O oh, kind of heaven and gracious Father, Lord, we just thank you so much, Lord, for this morning, Lord, for your time that you've given us, Lord. We pray that something that we have said throughout this class, Lord, that it all encourages, edify, and uplift us all to become better, better people, better citizens, Lord, and most of all, better Christians that know you. Not to be fearful, but to have on your whole arm of God, Lord, and to hold the line, Lord, and to know that we are in your armies. We're Christ's soldiers. Lord, we pray, Lord, that uh, the, all of the people that, are, that had requests earlier and, and all the requests that we had all the way from the, at the beginning of this, of this uh, lesson, Lord, that uh, all those requests be made. And we pray, Lord, that you just continue to forgive us of our sins. We thank you and we love you, Lord, and we pray that we see each other next week. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray and we say amen. All right, you all. Y'all have a good morning.